team and the Department of Life Sciences of KC College. We are very happy to see the overwhelming response which endorses the quality of program held at KC College and the importance of mangrove ecosystem which needs to be observed. This initiative would have been possible without principal Dr. Imlata Agla, an avid researcher, nature enthusiast, and an encouraging lead. But now I request uh, our principal ma'am to deliver her opening remarks for today's webinar. Hello, principal ma'am. Welcome to this webinar. Can we have your welcome address, please? Good evening, everyone. I'm indeed very happy to see that Life Science Department once again marches ahead uh, with one more webinar. I'm so happy that the Department of Life Sciences headed by Dr. Sagarika Damle and good leaders like Dr. Tejashri Shanbagh have been in forefront organizing more than 56 meetings in their departments and organizing number of activities. Once again, we are here as a part of this national webinar where I, I could see there are more than 300 participants. And because it's a very interesting topic is about birds of mangrove ecosystem. I extend a warm welcome to each and everyone who is participating in this national webinar, teachers of Casey College, vice principals of Casey College, teachers and principals of other institutions across Mumbai, across Maharashtra and across our country. And our warmest welcome to the speaker of today's uh, uh, program, uh, Mr. Lakshmikant Deshpande, who is a senior manager for conservation and environmental sustainability with Godrej and Boyce uh, Manufacturing Company Limited. And I got in touch with him when he was here, once again invited by the life science department during uh, the webinar, or rather it was a seminar, national seminars, uh, uh, two days national seminar, and it, the, the topic was uh, biodiversity. So uh, he is a, a nat nature conservationist, having worked on mangrove ecosystem, and today he's going to talk to us about the birds in the mangrove ecosystem. Dr. Lakshmikan Deshpande, I myself am interested in, in this particular uh, topic. Uh, so I really felt like uh, looking at the, uh, the, the title of the seminar to walk in and be part of all of you. Yes, because uh, I always realize that mangroves play very, very important role in feeding the variety of animals at the juvenile stage. And I realize that uh, uh, India has only 3.3% uh, of the mangrove cover across. If you see globally, it is more than 1,50,000 uh, square kilometer and they are depleting day by day. And the reason or the, to, uh, the worry is be, uh, of their crushing is between because they're squeezed by two things, which you will of course throw more light on, that is land use development for coastal development and also by rising sea levels on the other hand. So together we need to protect these mangroves and you being a uh, nature conservationist, I know you must be uh, putting pressure on the system uh, to take care of this uh, very important uh, 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 ecosystem of of the uh, of a uh, global ecosystem, and uh, we need to see, uh, need to understand from you and learn how uh, this uh, uh, ecosystem, an ecosystem which is host to many many birds, whether they are permanent or temporary residents, or uh, they are uh, whether they only depend on mangroves for their survival. So a lot of things we will learn from you today, and I know that all the participants who have joined this webinar will go. Uh, 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 will, will go with a lot of uh, experience and they will surely visit this subject and surely contribute in this direction. So congratulations to, to Department of Life Sciences, all the leaders who are leading from front and uh, thank you so much for organizing this webinar on a such, a, such an interesting topic and of course a, a, a topic where we all need to work together when it comes to environmental sustainability. Thank you so much uh, Dr. Zagari Kadamle and Dr. Dejeshi Shanbagh for organizing this webinar. So once again, a warm, warm welcome to each participant because such digital platform, you can't see all the participants, but I know somewhere in India when they are there, they have, if they have joined in because they want to learn something about uh, uh, the, the topic and maybe their love for the birds. So all bird lovers, let's enjoy this session. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Principal Ma'am. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to have you with us. I also welcome all the uh, vice principals of our college, of our faculty, other faculties across, of course, as Ma'am has welcomed them. And over to you, Duria. Uh, Tejashree ma'am, can I request you to introduce the speaker, please? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can I start with the introduction? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, good evening to one and all present here. In the middle of this pandemic crisis, we all are busy attending some serious webinars to learn and to improve ourselves. Here we have the KC College Department of Life Sciences has come up with and is inviting you for a webinar to relax and appreciate the natural beauty. Our speaker for the day, Lakshmikan Deshpande, is, uh, I'll introduce him to you, is a postgraduate with uh, environmental science from Pune University. Since then, he has worked with various organizations. His areas of interest and expertise are climate change, biodiversity conservation, wetland and mangrove ecosystem of Mumbai, solid waste management, and corporate social responsibility. In 2008, he was nominated for the Darwin Scholarship on Biodiversity Monitoring and Education offered by the Field Studies Council for Environmental Education UK, which he successfully completed and now is recognized as a Darwin Scholar internationally. Lakshmikan's notable initiatives include development of a mangrove mobile app, which is currently being used by conservation professionals from 65 countries across the world. He is. Uh, he, he also has developed Indra Dhanusha Citizens Environment Center at Pune to discuss Pune's environment issue, development of biodiversity garden at Alibag with 350 plus indigenous species, plant species. He's also involved in the development of communication strategies for solid waste management of Mumbai for BMC, advocacy for Mumbai Kurs for SGNP, campaign with media, and Mumbai Police on man leopard conflict, coordination of green teacher development boards for teachers and contribution to the 12th standard environmental science textbooks for the Maharashtra board. Currently, Lakshmikan works as a senior manager for mangrove conservation and environmental sustainability with Godrej and Boyens Manufacturing Company Limited. Besides this, the, the mangrove app, one more thing which he's conceptualized and coordinated is Many Secrets of Mangroves. That is India's first children's storybook on the mangroves. So we are proud to have you, Lakshmikan sir, for this particular webinar. I would also request the audience to please ask your questions in the QAN box or the chat box as and when they come to your mind so that Lakshmikan can address to them towards the end of his talk. We welcome you, Lakshmikan sir, for, the, for your talk. Uh, one line, uh, can I intervene, uh, Dr. Shanbagh? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I see a number of school kids uh, who are part of this webinar. So a warm, warm welcome to all uh, our young uh, participants. And uh, we look forward to having you amidst us. We will bring to you a number of seminars which will keep you engaged in sciences or in, 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 in other fields or with technology. So be there. Always remain connected with Casey College. So a warm, warm welcome to all youngsters from schools who are who part of this uh, webinar. Welcome them. I really welcome them from heart. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, principal, ma'am. Thank you, Tejashree. Thank you, Sarika, ma'am. Thanks for this generous introduction. Obviously, all the projects were a big teamwork, wherein uh, in every project, there was a big team involved. And uh, thanks to KC College team for giving me this opportunity to speak about a subject which is very close to my heart. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi Khan, so uh, 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 Dr. Lakshmi Khan, can you hear So our me? topic today is uh, birds of mangrove ecosystem, uh, forest, what are they, where are they found, why they are important. But I thought uh, let's still start with a basic introduction for those who are not aware. So the image that you can see, 
Yes. Hello. No, it's fine Hello, now. Sir, we can't hear you here. Uh, your audio was not clear first, but it became better now. Dr. Lakshmika, this is Dr. Bagla. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Just Sorry. check your audio, please. Yeah, yeah. I was disconnected. So yeah. now I'm back. Can we go to the previous slide? Yeah. Now you're clear. Yeah. Can we go to the previous slide? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so this is about birds of mangrove ecosystem. But as I said, let us introduce uh, ourselves to the mangroves, the wonderful world of the mangroves. The image that you can see uh, on the screen, many people won't believe, but it is of Mumbai. Uh, it's the mangrove forest of equally conserved by Godrej and boys. And uh, one can imagine uh, if this is the kind of aerial view that uh, mangroves of Mumbai have, how wonderful uh, the mangroves of other areas like Sundarban will be. So let's start. Uh, next slide. So the word mangroves actually has originated from Senegalese language. Uh, the word is mange, which means uh, into the sea and grove is garden. So it literally means garden or forest that grows into the sea. Uh, as the name suggests, they are uh, the plants ecosystem which grows at the interface between sea and land. This could be an island, a seashore, a creek, estuary, lagoon, bay, or any other ecosystem uh, where seawater meets the land. This also happens to be one of the ancient ecosystems. In fact, we have all heard about the Jurassic era. Uh, when Jurassic era was ending, the next era was Mesozoic era, when the mangroves evolved on the earth. So for almost 114 million years back, they have not only survived, but they have thrived in around 112 countries across the world. The mangrove forest is found in tropical and subtropical countries uh, for one condition. Why, why not in temperate condition? Because the main uh, requirement for their growth is temperature. They grow somewhere uh, in the waters, which has at least 16 to 24 degree as temperature, and thus they are found in uh, tropical and subtropical countries. Next. India, of course, is blessed with rich mangrove forest. World's largest mangrove forest is shared by India and Bangladesh, that is Sundarban, which is also known for uh, Bengal, uh, Royal Bengal Tiger. Uh, many states uh, harboring India's coastline support mangrove forest. West Bengal, of course, having the largest uh, share, uh, but Maharashtra, our own state, also has good healthy forest. In Maharashtra, there are, of course, 52 creeks, which all support uh, uh, mangrove forest across the coastline. Next. Now, when we talk about uh, mangrove forest, uh, one has to really understand that it is not an easy ecosystem. You know, generally, when we think about forest, People are very excited to go to a forest or visit it for bird watching. But believe me, the mangrove forests are very difficult to access uh, for many reasons. The sea is very dynamic, whereas land is very static. And when this dynamic ecosystem, when the dynamic sea attacks land, there is a lot of erosion, there is a lot of soil erosion, there is very high salinity, there is very high humidity. So it is not very easy for wildlife and even for human beings to be in mangroves. But still, in all these limiting factors, we do get very thriving wildlife across the mangroves because of the adaptations that the wildlife shows. So typically, if you see uh, there is excess salt, there is oxygen deficiency, the substratum is quite loose because of the tidal attack, the wind is very harsh, and of course, fresh water is very limited. So these are what we call as limiting factors for growth of wildlife. But it also has a special position because it being on the borderline of sea waves, that is uh, sea ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystem, we have three kinds of wildlife in this forest. We have terrestrial wildlife, coastal wildlife, and also marine wildlife. Next. 
so obviously animals and plants which are very flexible which can tolerate these adverse conditions and which can adapt are found in mangrove forest so if you look at this beautiful images all clipped in godrej mangrove forest you will realize that they are really specialized creatures look at the bird how the beak is look at the crabs you will notice one chilla is very large look at the snake the color and texture is very different so all these creatures have some way or the other adapted themselves into the uh, ambience or surrounding of mangrove forest of course we will not go into details of the mangrove forest today because that is not our focus that can be a separate session in itself we will talk mainly about the beautiful world of the birds that we have in mangrove forest next when it comes to india as many of you are aware we are one among the 10 top biodiversity mega diverse countries we are among the 10 top biodiversity hotspots of india because of the geoclimatic zones that we have because the kind of habitats we have and because of the species count that we have when we look at the birds count the global count is over 10500 species of which india host almost 1340 species which means more than 10% of world uh, world's birds are found in india but even the state of india is also blessed with very high Dr. Lakshmika, your voice is breaking. Uh, audio is not. Uh, maybe, Dr. Lakshmika, may I talk to you? Be able to believe, but Maharashtra's board count is like hundred and ninety. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Now it's clear. Now it's clear. Now it is clear. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. And actually, please uh, uh, switch off videos of all the participants. Yeah, I request all participants to please switch off your videos and audios as well. If I, it it creates disturbance. during the yeah that would help us because we wouldn't be able to listen to the talk then all right so we were talking about the birds uh, biodiversity the count and we are really blessed to have uh, this rich uh, diversity of birds uh, in our state and in our india uh, next next slide please yeah when it comes to birds uh they are also uh, one of the highly evolved group of taxa and uh, there are many interesting facts about them so i have just given a couple of examples to show how birds have really adapted themselves to survive in the habitats say for example arctic tern which also visits india by the way uh migrates to almost 40000 kilometers every year and that becomes a full circle around the earth so one can imagine the kind of strength this tiny bird possesses the raven european raven can mimic human sounds and in fact in ancient wars it has been used for spying on enemy nations an ostrich eye equals to almost a cricket ball in size why because of course it stays in deserts and it has to really look far and wide for its survival the peregrine falcon which is also a visitor to mumbai every year during migration during annual migration is one of the fastest birds uh, on the country in fact uh, on the earth so uh, the birds have basically evolved themselves over millions of years uh, because of interesting adaptations that they possess next
when we talk about uh, the kings of the sky, you know, in the Greek mythology, there is this Zeus god, which is king of the skies. But I always say that the king of the sky for me is this Raphael's Riffen vulture because it is the highest flying bird to about height of 37,000 feet above the mean sea level. So you can imagine uh, not just strength, but the kind of changes that has happened in its body. When we look at the birds, the body uh, is quite light because their bones are very strong, but they are quite hollow. In fact, they have air inside the, uh, inside the lungs. They have air sacs. These air sacs not only help in reducing uh, the weight, it also helps in temperature management because the birds, when they flap their wings very fast, uh, it generates heat and this heat needs to be dissipated, torn out of the body where these air sacs are very helpful. Their muscles are strong, but they are covered with almost four to five different types of feathers that reduces friction uh, with the air, uh, which is very helpful feature in their flight. And it sounds funny, but even their poop is also a mix of scat and urine. So uh, that is again an adaptation to reduce the body weight. So these are the kind of different variations that birds show across the world uh, in uh, adapting to their uh, flight ability. Next. Let's come to our topic that is mangroves. Generally, when people think about mangroves, they only look at uh, just one single uh, you know, kind of landscape. Like uh, when we looked at the aerial picture of mangroves, it looked very same. But trust me, uh, mangrove as an ecosystem has different habitats. It has the creek water. You can see on the right side, uh, mangrove apple trees making a protective wall uh, around the land in Thane Creek. Then we have some islands in the mangroves. Uh, the islands grow as a part of natural land reclamation process. We have grasslands. In the middle, you can also see a tidal pond. So the tidal pond is very interesting because its water level will depend on the high tide and low tide. During high tide, the pond will be full, whereas in the low tide, the water will be very less. And then we have mud flats, uh, which look barren, but trust me, they are not at all barren. They are in fact very rich in biodiversity because they host many crabs uh, uh, and fish and mollusks and worms and many other creatures. So typically the point that I'm trying to make here is uh, though mangrove looks uh, as the same uh, habitat, it has various niches wherein different creatures have adapted to grow. Uh, this is also applicable to the birds. So in each of these habitats, you will see different uh, types of birds, which we will have now introduction with. Next. So these are what we call as mangrove indicator birds. You know, in nature, it has its own language. Nature always tells you something. And uh, in this particular slide, the birds you can see are again migratory birds. They are a visitor uh, to India from Central Asia. And they love mangroves for a very selfish reason, of course. They love the intoxicating berries of miswak plant. These berries are white and red in color and full of kind of alcohol, you know, they have uh, intoxicating ingredients. So when these birds arrive in India, the first habitat they prefer is mangrove forest, very noisy bird. Uh, this bird belongs to the Maina family, common Maina family in the same group. Uh, again, uh, uh, like common Maina, it's also noisy and uh, they spread. So we have observed very interesting uh, thing that when these birds arrive uh, to the mangroves of Mumbai, they literally dominate the landscape. And the resident birds, you know, they poor chat, they have to go in the corners and find some other uh, nearby habitats because these are quite uh, bold and aggressive birds. This is Rosie Star. Next. Then we have a resident tiny bird called Munia. Uh, perhaps people of my age, you may remember that when we were kids, the birds trade was in thriving, you know, and these birds used to be sold on many railway stations uh, of Mumbai. You know, I used to see these birds in cage then. Uh, I never knew their name, of course. I was attracted to them because of the beautiful 
uh, coloration and patterns that they have. Uh, this is scaly breasted munia found in mainly grasslands around mangroves, and they are mainly uh, uh, they eat mainly seeds. So if you look at their beaks again, the beak shape is modified, which helps them to pluck uh, fruits and different grains and collect seeds from them. Uh, also, the body is almost brown in color, which helps in camouflaging in grasslands and uh, on brown uh, landscape. So that's so again one of the uh, adaptations of birds for survival, uh, that is camouflage. Next. Then we have a peculiar uh, but very common bird uh, in urban areas, in urban mangroves, that is purple sunbird. You will notice the bird on the left is very shiny, very bright, very attractive, whereas the one on the right is quite drab and sort of dull. This is again one of the special things in nature, except human beings in most other species, the males are colorful, attractive, they have to sing, dance, attract females, because their main job is to attract female to courtship. Whereas females main job in nature, in birds and reptiles is reproduction. So she has to hide herself, you know, she can't really afford to be colorful and attract a predator. So she has to be very boring, trap and camouflage uh, with her nest, eggs and chicks. This is purple sunbird. Again, look at the beak, a uh, very specialized uh, feature. This bird feeds mainly on the nectar in flower petals. So the beak has to be long, curved to be able to suck nectar out of the flower. Purple sunbird. Next. Then we have one more sunbird which is purple rum sunbird. Now, now here you will notice at the tail end, there is a purple color uh, patch on the back of the male. So that's why the name uh, purple rum sunbird, again, very common in uh, urban mangroves, found mainly uh, also in gardens. Uh, it will be uh, attracted to all the flowers, which has nectar in it but it also feeds on small insects and they build their nest, in fact, with cobwebs, uh, grasses, and whatever is available in nature, all those kinds of things. Next. Now we have three bulbul species, again, very commonly found in mangroves. The commonest found is red vented bulbul, what we call as Lalbudia in Marathi. Uh, you will notice again uh, the red patch uh, near the tail that gives its name. Uh, it feeds mainly on fruits, berries and insects, quite a bold bird in fact. Uh, generally it's a social bird found in pairs and flocks, but when it comes to protecting its feeding territory, it is quite aggressive. So you will often see this bird uh, fighting with other birds. Next. We have one more red whiskered bulbul, again named because of the red patch on its cheek and uh, also identified by the strong crest it has on its head. Next. And then we have again one indicator species called white ear bulbul. You will notice the bird is sitting on a plant called miswa. This is a mangrove associate plant. Uh, I was mentioning about the miswak berries. You can see the uh, the fruits are there. Of course, they are not ripe yet. Uh, when they are ripe, they will be red uh, or white in color, depending on the species of the miswak. And this bird loves, again, uh, the intoxicating berries. It can be identified uh, by the white chick and yellow portion near its tail. So we have these three common bulbul species uh, found everywhere across uh, Indian mangroves. Next. Then we have uh, a songbird. Uh, this is also found in fact in cities, in our gardens, in our housing complexes. Oriental magpie robin, quite an early riser bird. It will be early, uh, it will be active early morning by around five. And sometimes you will hear its whistle especially during mating season. This goes like so 
So these are different uh, whistling patterns of, of the uh, oriental magpie robin. Again, you will notice the female is dark, whereas the male is uh, quite shiny and glossy in color. Next. Uh, we have copper smith barbet called as tambat in Marathi. It's called copper smith because of the particular sound that it creates. Like when a, uh, when a copper smith hammers a metal vessel, you have this particular sound that is the call of this copper smith barbet. Many people mistaken it for woodpecker because they think uh, that the, the sound that it makes, the woodpecker is making the sound uh, by striking on the wood. But it is actually this copper smith barbet that is giving call in our gardens. Uh, one of the commonest urban birds uh, feed on berries and insects again. Next. Then we have bright yellow bird called Indian Golden Oriole. It's a shy bird. It's an elusive bird. But trust me, it is also very common bird. You know, if you really give a hard look at the urban trees uh, or in fact, gray mangrove trees, uh, you will find this in 15, 20 minutes because Generally, it will sit very quiet uh, and suddenly flash itself and fly away. The male is bright, the female is quite uh, greenish in color, and uh, it will build its hammock shaped nest uh, on the trees. Next. Then we have police bird. Or in Marathi, we call this also as Potwal word. You know, in olden times, in Marathi, police used to be called as Potwal. It is called police bird for a reason. Very aggressive bird, very territorial. Especially when it nests, it will not allow any predator birds to come nearby the nest. It has a unique strategy to defend its eggs and chick. Whenever it spots a predator bird coming nearby the nest, it will mimic some other predator bird. So for example, if it sees, if it sees an owl or if it sees a, a kite, it will actually make a call of uh, an eagle. So uh, people have in fact recorded uh, 10, 15 different calls of Drongo uh, by which it actually saves uh, its next generation. Now the smaller birds in the area they are also very smart. They know that whenever there is drongo nest, that means there is safety. So they will also build nest nearby the drongo, but they also have to pay price for it because this bird also feeds on different bird eggs uh, and smaller birds. So it's, a, it's also a bird of prey in itself in a way. This is drongo, uh, hot wild bird. Next. Then we have Asian Koyal. I'm sure many people, in fact, every one of, her, of us have heard Koyal, but very few people have noticed it. So the shining black blue with the red eye is the male, whereas the brown color with white scaly pattern is the female. The call we hear is of male, especially in this courtship season, when the male has to attract female. A lot of Koyal family birds also show an interesting phenomenon called brood parasitism. That means the bird, when I say that the birds have evolved, they have also taken some shortcuts. So this bird shortcut is that it has avoided all the hard work of building nest and parental care. The Asian Koyal will not build its own nest. Instead, the pair will file another host bird and the male will go near the other birds, other birds nest and actually create a disturbance. So the host bird parents, they feel threatened. They feel that the coil will attack their nest and then they will start chasing the male. When they are away, the female will quickly enter the host nest. She will lay her eggs in few minutes and she will just fly away. And by that time, the male uh, coil also has really uh, kind of disappeared. When the host birds return to their nest, they really don't realize that 
uh, some other bird have laid eggs in their nest, they will in fact uh, take care of the eggs and chicks. And this is how the bird actually escapes the entire pain of nest building and parental care. Many birds in coil family exhibit this uh, behavior called brood parasitism. Next. Then we have Southern Kokal called Bharadwaz in Marathi. Many people consider this as good omen. If you see this bird in the morning, it's supposed to be good sign. Uh, this is very commonly found in, uh, in urban habitats. It generally prefers to be on ground. It will not fly very high, hopping in the bushes, uh, identified by the bronze wings. Uh, but uh, this bird, though it belongs to coral family, it will build its own nest. So in that sense, it is exception to the coral family behavior. Next. Then we have what we call Veda Raghu in Marathi. Raghu is parakeet, Veda is crazy. These birds take crazy flights in the air. In fact, it glides because its main food is bees, butterflies, wasps, uh, uh, and different small insect-like bugs. So it will actually uh, spot an insect and take a crazy glide in the air to catch them and eat alive. Its nesting is also very peculiar uh, and adapted to the mangrove ecosystem. This bird will not build its nest on the trees. Instead, it will dig a tunnel in soft soil, uh, say on river bank uh, or in soft mud of the mangroves. So uh, this is very much found near wetlands, uh, marshes, uh, uh, also streams and rivers. Little green beetle, uh, Veda Raghu in Marathi. Next. Uh, the older generation definitely have seen and heard this bird, especially at night time, considered as unholy. So when we hear this bird, we are not supposed to step out of the house. This is found practically in all grasslands of India, uh, all barren lands, in deserts, uh, and also uh, the grasslands around mangroves. Red wattle lapwing, it will be in Marathi. Very different bird by habit. Uh, it does not again build its nest on the trees. Instead, it will just scrape the soil and lay eggs uh, on ground itself. The eggs and chicks will camouflage so much with the, with the soil that you will not be able to find them. But by chance, if any predator finds them, the bird again has a trick to uh, save them. It will show itself as injured. It will flap its wings. It will give very loud alarm calls and start running randomly on the ground. So the predator thinks it's very easier to catch the bird. And in fact, uh, it is more, there is more meat, there is nutrition. So let's catch the bird instead. Let's let the, let the eggs or the chicks go away. So the bird will not fly away. It will just run for some distance, it will take the predator away, and then it will fly away. So that's a fantastic trick of this bird uh, to safeguard its eggs and chicks. Red wattle lapwing, titwing in Marathi. Next. Then we have one of the most unique birds found uh, specially on thorny trees in mangrove ecosystem. Uh, this is Baya Weaver. You will see how the male is brightly colored. And the right side picture, which is almost world famous now, also shows interesting parental care by the father and mother bird. The story of whale nesting, uh, nest building of this uh, particular species is very interesting. The male will start building the nest. It will create the base first, and then it will attract uh, the female, it will sing, it will dance, it will flutter its wing, and it will attract the female. When the female arrives, the first thing that she will do is she will try to destroy the nest. Yes, she will try to destroy the nest. 
because it's her test for the male. If the nest is not strong, then the male is rejected. All the hard work is waste. If the nest is strong, then the male will collect almost three to four thousand grass blades or coconut leaf blades and uh, complete the nest. And then they will lay the eggs. Both the parents will show parental care. In fact, you can see how the chick was flying from the nest and how parents are literally pushing uh, and balancing themselves in the air to save their baby. So this is Baya Weaver. Next. Then we have butcher bird. Again, a tiny bird, but very expert hunter. Feeds on insects, spiders, small lizards and geckos. Also, this, uh, the uh, different uh, smaller fauna. It's called butcher bird uh, because it has a particular habit. It will catch insects and it will hang them uh, on thorny trees. Then later when it is busy, it will go to the tree and actually eat the insect uh, that it has hanged. It's also called robber's bird in English because of the black band. In Hollywood movies, we have seen how the robbers and the thieves uh, tie a black band around the eyes. So it is called robber's bird or butcher's bird in English. Found mainly in grasslands because it has a habit of perching and keeping an eye uh, on its area. Again, highly territorial bird. Next. Then we have again one more predator called Shikra. Males and females both look similar, but you will notice there is a characteristic difference in the eyes of these birds. On the left hand side, the male has red eyes, the female has yellow eyes. So that's how you differentiate uh, between male and female. Otherwise, they look very same, the gray wings with brown uh, striations on chest and on the belly. Uh, it whistles, uh, medium sized predator, uh, again common uh, in mangrove forest. Next. Then we have owls. In fact, we have seen three, four different species of owls in mangroves. There is barn owl, there is collar scop owl. Uh, I have also seen a painted bat, uh, a painted bat and uh, uh, other uh, smaller creatures which are generally uncommon in mangrove ecosystem. Coming to owls, of course, uh, there is a, a superstition that they can move their neck or they can revolve their neck in 360 degrees, which is a bit actually. They can only revolve their neck in 270 degrees, uh, which is also a substantial kind of movement that gives a, a wide uh, a vision, area of vision to hunt. Of course, they are a uh, nocturnal bird, so specialized to hunt in nighttime. It is said that uh, one owl uh, or one uh, pair of owls uh, hunt almost 300 uh, rats in a year. So this is best natural pest control that, may, uh, that we have in cities. Uh, barn owl is again uh, very common in urban mangroves uh, of Mumbai and Maharashtra. Next. Then we have black kite. I always call this bird an unfortunate bird because though this is a bird of prey, this is a hunter. Now it has modified itself into changing urban habitat. So in Mumbai uh, and in many cities of India, we have large dumping yard where there is plenty of garbage lying and dead animals. So this particular uh, uh, black kite has uh, now become a scavenger. Uh, that also indicates how humans really impact nature. Uh, it's a glaring example of changing not only habitat, but also uh, behavior of uh, birds and animals uh, in natural ecosystems. Uh, they are found in flocks. Uh, they mainly roost in grasslands uh, and use thermal currents uh, to go very high in the sky. So uh, thermal current is when temperature rises, the air will, try, uh, air will uh, start circulating in the sky and go up and the birds uh, actually just place themselves in this thermocolon and they uh, uh, they save their energy uh, of flapping the wings. Uh, black kite. Uh, then we also have next, uh, 
or some more predators. We have black shoulder kite. Uh, this is characteristic uh, bird uh, identified by gray body and black shoulders. It has a habit of hovering in the sky uh, at the same place and it will dive down only when it spots uh, its prey. It will feed on small snakes, uh, crabs, uh, lizards, uh, even uh, small snakes as well, uh, or uh, any other small creatures found in grassland uh, around the mangroves. Next. Uh, I, I, it was a difficult job actually to select these birds because there are so many birds uh, in mangrove forest and you know I was actually uh, in double mind so I have selected only a couple of birds which represent uh, their particular group. This is white throated kingfisher although we call it kingfisher it's very versatile in its habit it's an expert hunter uh, it will not in fact feed mainly on fish but it will feed on small birds, bird eggs, even small mammals uh, like squirrels, uh, crabs, lizards, uh, snakes, uh, worms. In fact, in mudflats, anything that it comes across, a very loud whistling call, which is again characteristic. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of more species of kingfisher in mangroves. We also have uh, three uh, toad kingfisher and we have a uh, small blue kingfisher. Next. Again, uh, very common bird uh, in urban mangroves, uh, very vocal during breeding season, uh, especially during late evenings and early mornings. Uh, obviously identified because of the complete white uh, front head, um, chest and belly. So it is called white breasted water hen. Uh, quite a bold bird. You will often see it crossing your path if you are uh, a nearby mangrove area. Uh, not a shy bird, quite used to human presence. Found only on the ground, it's not a high flyer bird. Next. Then we again have indicator birds. We call them indicator because uh, black wing steels are a very sturdy species. They can tolerate high amount of pollution in environment. Uh, because pollution is nothing but again excess of nutrients in which many crabs, uh, worms and algae flourish. And these particular birds, they probe the mud flats and pick up uh, their prey. Uh, when you find a large congregation of black wing steel, it may indicate that the mangrove ecosystem is actually polluted. This is a migratory species. Next. Then we have little cormorant, what we call as pan kaura in Marathi or pan kaua in Hindi because of its appearance like a house crow. You will also see it, has, it is spreading its wings for drying. You know, generally birds have oil glands which uh, keep their body dry and clean. But little cormorant doesn't have those oil glands, but it is expert swimmer. So it will dive inside the water up to few meters, catch the fish, but after every few hours, it has to come to the ground, uh, bask in the sun to dry its wings. That's a very characteristic habit. Uh, you also use it to identify the bird, little common. Next. Then we have common sandpiper, again, a migratory visitor. Uh, 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 identified by the, the brown wings and the black markings. Uh, it also has a very delicate whistling call. Uh, it will actively chase its its prey. You know, in the murder flat, you will see uh, it will run, stop, run, stop. So it, whenever it sees any worms or crustaceans, it will stop and actually uh, feed on them. Uh, found in small flocks, uh, also seen feeding in pairs on mud flats of mangroves. Next. Then we have little egret, very easy to identify because of the snow white feathers it has and also characteristic long feather on the head during mating season. 
you will also notice its claws are yellow in color uh, quite a social bird but little aggressive or rather quarrelsome when it comes to feeding it will not allow other egrets uh, to come in its small territory but found in flocks we have little egret median egret and large egret uh, in wetlands these are the three common egret species we have in india next then we have indian pond heron we will see same species but so different in appearance the male during breeding season will have this glossy gray brown color and a long feather on the head like a shindy whereas the female and the juvenile male are completely drab in color with vertical brown striations uh, vertical brown and white striation with yellow feet again this is a very sturdy heron in india can withstand very high pollution so commonest uh, heron uh, found across mangroves we have uh, other herons like night heron gray heron and other heron species uh, common in mangrove forest next you know when we move around generally in our cities and states we never realize we would have so many birds right like we are very used to only a couple of species that we see from our window but i am sure now uh, after this lockdown uh, you will want to go out and see these birds in nature this is again one particular uh, uh, species top species and check its beak check its bill it's so different you will see a gap uh, between upper and lower beak now that is for a particular reason the food of this birds is mollusk mollusk are uh, creatures on coastline which has a soft body but tough shell so the bird will actually hold this mollusk in in its beak and press the beak when it press the the beak uh, the shell will break and it will eat the soft animal inside so uh, one thing that Uh, we should always remember that though the birds are successful in evolution they have taken this millions of years to adapt themselves to the food and habitat uh, that they prefer and when human beings suddenly change this habitats uh, because of say so called development or construction or land reclamation the birds really can't uh, adapt themselves very fast that is why uh, we have to be really mindful of our development process next and we have gulls and terns we have several gull and tern species across india this is one of the commonest uh, migratory gull called brown headed gull easy to identify because of the brown hair but even when the head is not brown you will see a white patch on the wings both wings it is called mirror patch and uh, that patch is its identification characteristic it will be uh, hovering around mud flats and shallow creeks uh, across mumbai uh, feeding on small fish so we have uh, a brown headed gull and uh, then common tern caspian tern uh, many species visiting uh, to india from central asia and other uh, areas of the world next then we of course have our star species of mumbai i'm sure many of you would be waiting for this bird we have greater flamingo and lesser flamingo two species in uh, creeks of mumbai in fact i'm sure many of you have seen the picture of pink pond in navi mumbai at kargar near tadavi island it's a it's a pond inside the creek it's a wetland where uh, you will predominantly see the pink color uh, there is a debate about why this color is pink in color some say that it's a chemical pollution uh, many people say it's because of the algal bloom but unless you really test the water uh, physically and chemically you cannot really come to a conclusion maybe it's a it's a combination of both reasons uh greater flamingo and lesser flamingo are also called as rohit in marathi 
their sanskrit name is more apt they are called agni pankhi yes agni pankhi because of the bright pink color that is almost like a fire uh, in air uh, but these flamingos again indicate us something they indicate that the large congregation means uh, there is pollution or degradation of the ecosystem so uh, when they are uh, large in uh, numbers their main food is actually algae and algae thrive in uh, in polluted waters as i said pollution is nothing but excess of nutrients uh, and these nutrients uh, give rise to high number of algae and these are filter feeder birds that means they will drink water and they will sieve out water they will throw out the water but they will take in the algae which in turn will give pink color to their wings uh, flamingos uh, migrate all the way from gujarat uh, to mumbai and maharashtra but they breed uh, in their homestead that is gujarat uh, of course naturalists have also found that some of the uh, birds some of the flamingo population has made now mumbai as their homestead they are found here throughout the year and ngos like bnhs are doing long term research uh, on the flamingos but the flamingos remind us that uh, when you have large congregation of these birds in your creek that means uh, the the creek is actually dying it means the creek is polluted and it is silting because these birds prefer shallow habitat and thane creek which was deep uh, once upon a time is now silting fast so uh, as a bird lover uh, i appreciate it bird but uh, i also know that uh, the government needs to act uh, on managing our wetlands much better next so these were some of the common birds that we picked uh some of you may ask that you know it's okay birds are beautiful they are colorful we love birds but why should we protect them uh friends let me tell you birds are very important in nature they are important for in fact human food security also because uh, when the birds feed on nectar uh, or when they sit on trees they actually help uh, in pollination to a great extent they also eat fruits and when these fruits pass through the gut the acids in the gut act on many hard fruit and uh, the fruit shell gets dissolved because of acidic gut and the seeds pass out from the scat so there are many plant species which cannot germinate unless the seeds pass out from acidic gut of uh, birds and animals so this is interdependency of animals and plants on each other uh for food security birds are very important also many uh, birds feed on insect for example the egrets and oils and stork and heron that we saw they feed on a moth called hyblia moth uh, commonly found in mangroves in fact this year only uh, i'm sure many of you have read or experienced the hyblia moth attack in mumbai and navi mumbai's mangroves uh, they were large in uh, they were out in large numbers and uh, the, uh, the birds uh, like these are their natural uh, pest controls uh, then of course uh, they are part of important uh, food chain uh, and cycle nutrients uh, to food chain so there is a reason uh, why we should conserve birds next next slide please so i'm sure uh, bird lovers uh, want to protect birds there are many simple ways to conserve birds uh, whether in mangroves or in your natural habitat of course some of them are debated for example bird bath yes especially in summer when temperatures are high and birds fall from heat strokes please keep these bird baths uh, you know shadow bird baths uh, in your housing complex or in your window sill Uh, which will allow the birds to drink water and cool down personally i am not in very favor of keeping bird feeders because what we have observed is bird feeders uh, bird feeders also uh, alter the bird demography for example uh, sturdy birds like pigeon will dominate uh, the bird feeders or we have also seen that uh, squirrels and rats will use the bird feeders 
so actually uh, uh, they are natural uh, pests in, in that sense if you see the crows squirrels uh, pigeons uh, they dominate uh, other birds so uh, the best way to conserve birds is to plant natural and indigenized uh, plant species uh, around you that will create natural habitat for birds uh, i have given some examples of ngos from mumbai uh, but uh, i'm sure you will be able to find many ngos uh, in your own district or state uh, which conserve birds uh, either through bird ringing camps uh, or bird watching sessions or uh, or by selling uh, these bird boxes uh, one of the common problems uh, in bird conservation is loss of natural habitat so you can also buy these bird boxes specialized boxes for different species and uh, help birds in the reproduction besides birds uh, you can also help in mangrove conservation uh, i have given uh, uh, the forest helpline number for maharashtra state but i am sure all the states across india have their own helpline numbers so if you see any mangrove being uh, hacked uh, or any garbage or wastewater being dumped in mangrove or uh, if you notice any poaching of birds or animals you can always call a local forest department to take action uh, some things that we can do at home is please avoid use of strong chemicals uh, like a simple phenyl that we use in our houses do try to find out uh, mild chemical options or uh, organic cleaners or soaps and detergents and the last point is uh, very important that is waste segregation because most of the garbage that we create lands up in wetlands of india be it a pond river creek or sea uh, you have i'm sure you have seen the pictures of uh, mumbai sea returning all the garbage to the city uh, it happens in chennai of course uh, and also kolkata so we it's it's our duty to reduce uh, garbage not in just quantity but also in types uh, please recycle dry waste please send it for recycling and compost your wet waste so these are some of the ways for bird conservation in uh, urban habitats and mangrove ecosystem next next slide please i would like to thank kc college team for giving me this opportunity and also thank uh, my organization godrej and boys Uh, which has conserved this large patch of mangrove forest uh, uh, in the eastern suburbs of mumbai this is one of the very unique forest uh, we call this as second largest green lung of mumbai after sanjay gandhi national park this is the second continuous forest uh, in mumbai metropolitan region uh, there are many teams in godrej involved in mangrove management through research conservation and awareness Uh, it's a rich uh, uh, forest with lot of biodiversity in it, and Godrej uh, is not only conserving mangroves in its habitat. We also have created awareness tools open for open common public. Uh, as Tejeshri Madam uh, mentioned uh, some time back, we have this uh, pictorial mangrove app, uh, which has 67 mangrove species in 11 Indian languages. do download the mangrove app to understand mangroves more you can also download uh, a poster set of eight posters a powerpoint and story book for children from our website mangroves.govrish.com so uh, uh, i think i should stop here thanks a lot for your patience and i suppose uh, the session will be open for questions and answers thank you uh, lakshmi kan sir uh, we have a special guest with us today and that is our past president and uh, our trustee of hsnc board anil hari sir welcome sir to this uh, webinar and uh, i would like you to say something <laughs> request from all of us well thank you it's uh, i have learned so much by seeing this it was really a beautiful presentation with fantastic sharp pictures 
and such a clear explanation and to think that we have all this within the within our own city a city is known as a concrete jungle but what we have seen today is that there is so much more that there is in terms of so many species of mangroves of birds of butterflies and it was it was really illuminating i have been wanting for a long time to have to see something like this so i have bought some books on birds etc but it's not the same thing as hearing it in this manner mr lakshmikant and kc college thank you so much for organizing this this has been a great learning experience and it shows us all our place uh, we when we withdraw from our busy schedules and we sit back and see how much more there is in life that we are really uh, we are overwhelmed by the enormity of the system of life itself and that there are so many more species than we begin to feel even more like a speck of sand on a beach when we see something like this so thank you again it's been a wonderful seminar so thank you so much for gracing this uh, webinar and i knew you will like uh, because you are so uh, you are you're a nature lover yourself whether it is tree or ecosystem you will be the first one to join the webinar so thank you so much sir for gracing this webinar and this webinar is the first webinar by department of life sciences on the new oh. university if you realize at this university so and you being there really uh, motivates us thank you so much sir and always uh, uh, when it it is uh, i think life science department or uh, it's about birds about nature about trees we will keep inviting you because we know it, it's yes. very near and i'll always be so there <laughs> yes and the uh, best part of this webinar is uh, most of the participants are from school and uh, the oh. kids uh, so uh, yeah it, we reached out to school so i, I think that was uh, i think uh, usp of this uh, webinar so i congratulate the department to reaching out to to uh, children and you know uh, and they should encourage them more to participate in such webinars and i thank yeah. even uh, uh, i mean lakshmi kant ji it's beautiful presentation as sir mentioned uh and it was a crystal clear picture as if we were witnessing the nature sitting at home and a uh, few videos would have done the wonders i was waiting for a couple of videos actually of flamingos or actually looking at the ecosystem so we will uh, look forward to many more webinars with you on different uh, 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 and the parts of uh, uh, ecosystem mangrove ecosystem so today we covered the birds so maybe reptiles and maybe other animals next time So over to Dr. Sagri Kadamle. Yes, thank you, thank you so much, sir, and uh, thank you, ma'am, for those wonderful words. I think it's really our honor to hold a seminar, a webinar under the HSNC University. We are really feeling very, very nice about the whole thing. And sir, you being here, I I must mention this that whatever uh, nature-related activities that department takes up, Anil Hari sir is always there. and he's always promoting things like the film on green corridors so sir thank you so much once again for being with us and thank you ma'am for ever encouragement that we get from you thank you so, so much so can we have can we have now the question answer session yeah please go ahead thank you ma'am siddarth ma'am yes so we oh. have student volunteer siddharth will be uh, reading the questions from the chat and uh, lakshmikan sir i'll be thanking you formally at the end of the question answer session thank you so much good evening sir so uh, good evening lakshmikan sir so the first question from one of our youtube viewer is that whether the indian golden oriole is indigenous to india uh yes actually there are two species indian uh, golden oriole and eurasian golden oriole uh, earlier indian golden oriole was uh, was considered as part of uh, same species but recently it has been differentiated so it's a it's a resident bird it's a different species indian yes so we have another question in the chat box how can the baya weaver lay eggs in a vertical nest how do they lay their eggs in the in a vertical nest yeah excellent question so uh, the nest has horizontal compartments in it in fact uh, so the bow the nest is vertical it has a horizontal two or three compartments inside it uh, in which uh, the eggs are laid and the chicks are there 
Yes, sir. So there is another question. Could the color of flamingo blue match? Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Yes, sir. That. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, there are questions. Ma'am, uh, sir, there are questions. Can uh, can the participants, some of the participants, visit the mangrove forest in Godhri? Uh, yes, uh, you can. We do conduct guided nature trails uh, for schools, colleges, uh, corporates, or any organized groups. Uh, you can contact us uh, uh, on our phone or email ID and uh, block a date, and we will plan it. Yes. So there is another question. White eared bulbul is an indicator species, as you mentioned. So is it to be known as? Is it does it help to know the mangrove ecosystem health? So uh, when I say indicator species, uh, indicator species indicate uh, many things. Uh, the the white eared bulbul it it actually feeds mainly on miswak berries like rosy starlings. So their presence indicate uh, uh, mangrove ecosystem around it. So uh, when I say indicator, they indicate presence of mangroves in the habitat. Yes. So there are quite a few few questions related. I know the questions are pouring. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So would so, you pick up some? Uh, so one of the uh, questions asked. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, so. Uh, so one of the uh, questions asked by the uh, uh, people are, uh, so uh, what is the tentative month of arrival of few of the birds and from exactly, is there any specific regions from where they come from? Yeah, so the most birds that arrive in India are winter migrants. That means in winter season, the temperature in their own country is too cold. Uh, they cannot withstand that low temperature and also there is no food over there. So they fly, I mean, they migrate towards Asia. Uh, they start arriving in India by around October. Uh, from October, they will stay till March or April, and then by April, they start moving back to their own countries to breed. So they will breed in their own countries, but they will come and stay uh, uh, in Asian countries uh, uh, like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and many other countries. So, another question Can we recognize the difference between a male and female kite? Uh, yes, actually, again, uh, you know, I have not gone to the deep, but each species will have uh, some differentiation in, in terms of plumage, uh, size, uh, and also behavior. So, yes, you can. Yes. So, there's another question. Uh, are wetlands and marshlands the same or different? So, marshland is a type of wetland. Wetland is an umbrella term which uh, includes mangroves, uh, ponds, rivers, seashores. Wetland is uh, any space uh, on the earth which is covered with water for some time of the year, not throughout the year. So if you see seashore or creek, you know that it is high tide and low tide. They are covered by seawater uh, for some time of the year. So marsh uh, is a type of wetland. Yes. So another question, are there any internships or courses which can be done at the Godrej mangroves? Uh, yes, we do uh, uh, consider internships uh, for a few weeks or for a uh, few months. Uh, this is to help uh, in our own research, conservation and awareness initiatives. So depending on the academic background interest of the group and college support, we do offer internship. But for that college also need to uh, give support. Yes. Uh, so there's another question. Uh, there is a mixture of migratory birds. So how do these birds adjust uh, in this mangrove ecosystem since they all come from uh, different areas and regions? When they come from different areas and regions, they are also in almost similar habitat in their own parent country. So like if you see flamingo, flamingo migrates from Gujarat to Mumbai. Maharashtra, but in Gujarat also it will be found in wetlands. So which means they uh, migrate to different countries, but they uh, uh, select almost same type of habitat. 
okay sir so the next question uh, why are the flamingo babies white the flamingo babies are white or gray in color because they still have not started consuming algae to a great extent only when they uh, consume this algae which has pink uh, uh, what you call pigments in them then the, uh, the pink color starts appearing so because the pigment is not uh, in good quantity in, in chicks in juveniles they are not pink in color whereas adults uh, have consumed a lot of algae by them yeah this this question was also asked by our good friend nitesh joshi sir and i think he also asked whether the color of the birds were due to algae Yeah, yeah. In flamingo, yes. Uh, so there's another question. Uh, so what? Uh, what makes the mangrove forest uh, a a large area for the migratory birds? A specific uh, uh, quality of the mangroves. So mangroves are one of the habitat for migratory birds. Migratory birds uh, are not exclusively visiting mangroves in India. They. Uh, visit all other habitats but uh, as i said that wetlands uh, but the birds that prefer wetlands they will uh, uh, prefer mangroves uh, in winter over okay thank you sir so also uh, there is another question are mangroves the host plants of butterfly yes they are for example uh, the small salmon or a butterfly lay its eggs on miswak uh, plant species so mangroves are host of butterflies as well so there is another question uh, will there this covid 19 will have does it will it have any impact on the mangrove ecosystem it's a tricky question i am not sure how to answer it because i personally believe that unless there is a research uh, uh, you know uh, we can't answer like we are still not sure how uh, covid virus is affecting uh, birds and animals we have seen that Uh, already tiger in bronx zoo has been uh, kind of infected and there was also a report of a dog a uh, pet dog uh, having caught the virus but uh, there is so far there is no cases of uh, infection of any uh, fauna animals in the mangroves affected by covid Uh, so there is another question uh, can the mangrove plants be reared by tissue culture techniques yes they can be Okay, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. Another one: uh, Is there any conflict between the bird species that uh, arrive at the mangrove ecosystem? Yeah, actually, there can be sort of. It's not a conflict, but of course, there is a competition between resident birds and migratory birds. We have observed this that, uh, uh, like as I was saying, uh, I, I told that Rhodes' starling, which is a migratory minor species, it is quite quarrelsome and aggressive. So they will obviously occupy. a large of the habitat uh, and the resident birds will find nearby other habitats in process for some for some part of the year but once this migratory birds are back then obviously resident birds will be back to their original habitat yes sir so there is a question related to flamingos uh, do they eat worms do they feed on worms uh, they will actually uh, feed on algae and crustaceans so they have a specific uh, kind of uh, food and as i said they are filter feeders so they will not eat any uh, other creatures yes sir uh, so there is another question is there sexual dimorphism in copper smith barbet yeah. not really sure but i think they are look almost same So, so again, a question. Yeah, yeah. Ma'am, oh, it it is so it is related to flamingos again. Why do they consume food with their head upside down? Uh, because their food, that is algae and their all these crustaceans, are actually in mud flats. So uh, they have to keep their uh, head upside and drink water in that sense. And they will throw out the water again, but they have sieve like structures in their beak. To which they will filter out, so uh, they will have to keep their food ahead upside down to take in water okay. during low tides. Yes. yes.
So there is a, a participant has seen a video in which the flamingo has been feeding his or her young her young one, and the milk color was red. So yeah, yeah. Is it yes, yes, because of that algae. Even I have seen that video. So, so there's also another, another question. question. Yeah, yeah, another sure. question. Uh, is it true that mangroves hold a lot of carbon and they can be an issue while fight while the fight against the climate change? Uh, in fact, mangroves help in carbon sequestration. Mangroves capture three or four times more carbon dioxide than uh, most terrestrial ecosystems. So in carbon sequestrations, mangroves are very useful to mankind by acting as a carbon stock. But if you destroy these mangroves, if we reclaim that land, you know, the, the whatever carbon was captured uh, by the mangroves, that will be uh, back to the atmosphere, contributing to climate change and global warming. So it is very important to conserve mangroves. All right, sir. So we are ending the question and answer session here. I would now like to request Dr. Sagrika Damle, our head of department of life sciences from KC College to speak a few words and deliver the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Siddharth. Uh, I think there is a feedback form link posted on the chat box. All participants are requested to copy that link and please give us your feedback. It's very, very valuable to us. And we are giving e-certificates. There were many questions regarding that. And yes, it's free. There are no charges. But please fill the feedback form and send it back to us. So the next seminar, webinar that we uh, will organize, we can do a better job. Uh, so with that, uh, I think I should. I have no words, Lakshmi Khan, sir, to actually thank you. But if I can say that you started right from the Mesozoic era, 140 million years ago when all the mangroves started making an appearance on this planet. And then you also told us about the bird basket and where India stands in that bird basket. And if I can say your uh, presentation or your slides, they, they just took us from being insane to interesting and enchanting, I would say. Very, very captivating. All the uh, accounts of uh, rosy starlings and uh, Skelly breasted Munira, purple sunbird, flamingos, and of course the, the mesmerizing Baya weaver and the, the feeding, you know, the picture that you posted. It was just marvelous. And also, uh, your talk included about the uh, benefits of ecosystem that mangroves does to entire ecosystem, just not mangrove ecosystem. And also some pointers that you gave about uh, bird feeders and all. I think each and every participant who is here is going to benefit most from all the tips that you have given us. So on behalf of the entire KC College and Department of Life Sciences, a very, very grateful heart. A big thank you comes to you, Lakshmi Kansar. Thank you, KC College team. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. College team, of course. As I said before, uh, we were honored to hold this webinar under the HSNC University. And it was indeed our great, great pleasure to welcome Anil Hari sir. And of course, Hema ma'am. Uh, Hema madam, I have, again, no words to thank you, but we are immensely grateful for your ever encouraging uh, support that we get. Um, you always lead by example. And everything that we do at KC is uh, motivated and supported by you. So thanks a lot on behalf of all of us. Um, I would also like to thank uh, all participants uh, who are here. But before that, I would also like to thank our <laughs> vice principals. And I think I saw Justin, sir. I'm thankful to Shalini, ma'am. I'm thankful to Padi, sir, uh, that they're always there for any troubleshooting and always there to help us. So thank you, all the vice principals and the office staff, all the techno technology backup that we got from Roshan, Monish, and all the team, uh, uh, the participants, we were not really expecting this huge number, but I think uh, I must thank all the participants who have, who have gathered here today for this webinar, uh, not only from Maharashtra, the school kids, the faculty, the students. And I can just say that we had, we had uh, participants from Punjab to Pondicherry. 
So I think a big thank you from all of us for sparing your time and being here and uh, sharing this beautiful experience with all of us. So thank you all the participants. Um, I would like to also thank my team, our strength, KCLSD, as we call it, Department of KC uh, Life Sciences, and uh, Tejashree ma'am and all my faculty members, Pratiksha ma'am from statistics, Mayuresh sir for his technical backup, and of course, our dear, dear students, uh, Duria and Siddharth. I think this was not possible without each one who's present here, without their contribution and their presence, this seminar wouldn't have been a success. Monish, a big, big help for all the technical support. Roshan, he's going to still be with us because the certificates will come to you from Pratiksha and Roshan, sir. And if I have not mentioned anybody in my thank you, please do forgive me. But once again, a big thank you to all at KC and all participants. Thank you so very much. So last thanks to each one of you, all the participants, and we are looking forward uh, to have you amidst us again in the next webinar. So get ready, stay safe, take care. And a big thank you to Mr. Anil Hari, sir. Uh, uh, our, uh, I mean, all ideas uh, come from him. Uh, he keeps encouraging us. Thank you so much, sir. And also to uh, Dr. Lakshmi Khan, please, uh, uh, I mean, think of the next webinar. We would like to have you again with us. You have only, as I repeat, you only covered only one aspect, birds, but we would like to get into uh, mangroves uh, more deeper. So thank you so much. And I thank all the uh, members of the life science department, the leader, Dr. Damle and Dr. Teja Shishanbak and all the student volunteers. And of course, tech team of Casey College for hosting this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. May I request tech team to end the meeting?